Hello everybody, it's Dr. Watkins again, and I am going to prepare you for our informative speech. Think for just a moment about what information really means to you in terms of lessons that you have learned throughout your life. In fact, a lot of us are able to identify with the picture on the left because it seems we have been in school forever, doesn't it? Usually, the teacher is standing in front of the room in the traditional setting. And of course, now that we are involved in online learning, we know that teachers facilitate virtually as well. But still, the act of teaching or helping students to learn is a fundamental of life. I wonder how many of us have learned lessons in the kitchen. In fact, some of us probably not only have learned lessons in the kitchen, but we are still teaching lessons in the kitchen. I'm sure you have some favorite recipes and specific techniques that you would like to instruct would-be cooks. Many of us may remember the days of t-ball. In fact, some of us may actually have children, and you are now giving them lessons on concepts and techniques that you yourself once was taught. So, teaching and forming is a pretty expected phenomena, we might say, of life. But now, think about what you would consider to be exemplary teachers. What made that person an exceptional teacher? A lot of us naturally will think back to teachers that we have had in grade school, and certain ones stand out, but the teacher who really did an effective job, what did he or what did she do? And asking ourselves those questions is really fundamental because for this particular speech, we are acting in the role of a teacher. So, if you're wanting to teach someone some geometric concept, or maybe a mini Spanish lesson or something from psychology, maybe even a history lesson, or how about some time management skills, the kind of lesson that we would learn in a college skills class or University 101 kind of course. Bottom line, we need to be sure that we are communicating with our audience slash class in a way that they can relate and understand. And that is true in real time as well as in virtual time. One fundamental point that we need to remember is never to overestimate what the audience knows. Let's say, for example, that I am giving an informative speech on meteorology and I specifically am talking about hurricanes. Now, if I were to, in my speech, say, quote, if modern methods of forecasting had existed in 1900, the Galveston hurricane disaster would never have occurred, and then move on to the next point, I think it's pretty obvious that I'm missing something. In fact, how many of us know what happened in Galveston in 1900? Less alone, how many of us actually know where Galveston is? We may have a few who know about the location of Galveston, but unless you have some kind of prior or current knowledge, you're not going to be able to link with that example. Now, if I am acting as a teacher and I am facilitating that, then I can actually show you a map and show you where Galveston is. In fact, as you see right here, it's on the coast of Texas beside the Gulf of Mexico. And so in many respects, teaching and creating a clear picture for our students is essential. Now, if I were to share in my informative speech some interesting statistics concerning the Galveston hurricane, I think that it would mean a whole lot more. For example, as you look at these bulleted items, I think you probably 
would say it really is worth knowing about the Galveston hurricane that took place in 1900. It is amazing. But unless we make this information real for our audience or our students, they will not get it. So don't overestimate. Think about how we know a concept Likely, we learned it from someone. It may have been a hands-on kind of demonstration. It may have involved simply what we might call head knowledge. But no matter what, we still had to learn the concept. Whenever we are explaining to someone or several people how to do something, we have to be very clear in our explanation. So for this informative speech, as you think about a concept that you have learned in another course, it might be something that you learned in Spanish, it might be something that you learned, let's just say, in automotive technology. It doesn't necessarily have to link to a textbook, but you still have to make sure that you explain it to your audience. Bottom line is this is an informational speech. So we are sharing information, but we do need to get it across to the audience in a meaningful way. I'm often reminded of Oscar Wilde. I don't know how many of you know about Oscar Wilde, but he actually was a British dramatist. And one time, Oscar Wilde was talking with a friend, and Oscar Wilde's friend asked him, quote, Oscar, how did the play go? End of quote. And then Oscar replied, quote, Oh, the play was a great success, but the audience was a failure. End of quote. So I think right there you get the point. We really do need to relate to an audience in a meaningful way. Let's say, for example, that I decided I was going to give an informative speech dealing with science, and specifically, I'm going to focus on chili peppers. Well, if I started off my informative speech by saying, I want to talk with you about chili peppers, I don't think that maybe other than one or two people who might raise an eyebrow or two, that most people would find that very interesting or exciting. We do need to consider the audience and we need to make the subject matter interesting. We have to capture attention. We have to have that bang. Now, if I were giving a speech on this very subject and instead of just saying, I want to talk with you about chili peppers, I were to start it off by saying something like, imagine your mouth burning like wildfire, your eyes squirting in uncontrollable tears, and your face red and sweating profusely. Are you sick? No. You just took a bite of a screaming hot chili pepper. Congratulations. You're partaking in a worldwide tradition that has been spicing up lives and diets for thousands of years. Now, compare that to, I want to talk with you about chili peppers. I think it's pretty obvious (laughs) that the second introduction is a far better one for capturing the audience's attention. Wow. Suppose I wanted to give a speech on bed bugs. This is a pretty scary looking bed bug. Wouldn't you agree? If I started off the speech by saying, Today I'm going to give a speech on bed bugs, I don't think that most people are going to be very interested in the subject. However, if I were to ask a question and say, I wonder how many of you have recently stayed in a hotel or a motel and actually wondered about the cleanliness of the bed sheets. Now that's the kind of question that can really capture people's attention. We also need to be very careful not to be too technical. Let's face it, 
if you're going to talk about a subject and you want to talk about a subject about which you are very familiar and knowledgeable, there are likely terms that you use. If I were telling someone how to understand the basic parts of the guitar, I need to explain concepts like a fret in a way that would be meaningful for the audience members. Because if I just use a bunch of terms and I don't really give an explanation or at least point or show what I am explaining, then the audience members think of it as your class will find it difficult to understand. I am often reminded of a quote from the novelist Joseph Conrad, and the quote goes like this, quote, My task is, before all, to make you see. End of quote. Now, of course, we live in the age of multimedia, but you can actually create pictures in the minds of your audience members without having a specific file posted on YouTube. Now, obviously, we are uploading our speeches on YouTube, but in and of itself, to be able to create a picture in the minds of our audience members does not necessarily mean that we have to have a multimedia presentation. Let's explain it this way. Let's say that for my informative speech, I'm going to give a little mini science lesson on comets. If I were to say in my speech, if a comet or a large asteroid struck the Earth, the impact would be devastating. I think a lot of the class members, the audience, would think, hmm. But then on the other hand, what does devastating really mean? But if I were to say in my speech for my little lesson, to give you an idea how devastating the impact would be, it would be like all the nuclear bombs in the world going off at one spot. Now that is being much more descriptive. Let's say that for my quote-unquote lesson or informative speech, I wanted to talk about autism. Well, I could give lots of facts and statistics about autism, but it really would not have a whole lot of significant meaning without some kind of personalization. Let's say, for example, that I were giving a speech on autism, and whenever I started my speech, I did something like, My nephew Sam was the delight of our family when he was born. The first grandchild of my parents, he cooed and babbled, smiled at his mom and dad, grasped for the playthings around his crib. At family dinners on Sunday, we took turns holding him in our arms, feeding him and singing to him. He seemed like any other normal infant in fact, everything until shortly before his second birthday, we began to notice unusual behavior. In fact, Sam avoided looking us in the eyes, and Sam did not seem interested in learning words. He played endlessly with the same toy. He rocked back and forth in his chair for hours at a time and was easily frustrated. Now, I think right then and there, you can see by personalizing, it takes on a lot, of, a lot more meaning. All right, go ahead and select a topic about which you're very in, informative and knowledgeable. Remember, you only have a max of five minutes, we're saying four to five minutes, to relate this. But make sure that you make it interesting. Capture the audience's attention have at least three major points, and then give us a conclusion. Don't say, that's all I have. Make sure that you wrap it up by making it meaningful. And of course, don't forget the visuals. Teachers have props. Teachers have visuals. So think about how you can make this informative lesson a lesson 
to be remembered. Okay, I'm looking forward to those informative speeches. See you later.